गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू ऑर्गेनाइजिंग फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी डॉक्टर बंसी साबू सर एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर स्पेरिंग योर टाइम एंड अटेंडिंग द लास्ट सेशन ऑल्सो थैंक यू वेरी मच सो माई टॉक इज वेदर इट शुड बी गिवन टू ऑल द डायबिटीज एज अ सेकेंड लाइन ड्रग ऑन नॉट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद अ क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ सो वाई आर वी ट्रीटिंग डायबिटीज दैट इज अ मेजर क्वेश्चन इट्स नॉट जस्ट अ नंबर गेम दैट यू मेक योर शुगर्स फ्रॉम थ्री हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड और समथिंग लाइक दैट इज नॉट जस्ट द नंबर गेम देर डायबिटीज हैज इट्स ऑन कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड दिस कॉम्प्लिकेशन यू वॉन्ट टू प्रिवेंट दैट इज वाई यू आर ट्रीटिंग डायबिटीज दैट्स अ सिंपल आंसर टू प्रिवेंट मॉर्बिडिटी एंड मॉर्टिलिटी दैट इज वाई वी आर ट्रीटिंग डायबिटीज राइट सो वेदर द ग्लाइसिमिक कंट्रोल अलोन दैट दैट वॉज थॉट बिफोर दैट इज ओके इफ यू डू इट with will you prevent all the mortality morbidity the answer is absolutely no this is a meta analysis of 2015 why i have put this because this meta analysis is prior to this does not include the sglt2 so this included 14 trial rct with almost 95000 patient and here you can see that even with the glycemic control the main drugs were used as uh, dpp4 inhibitors and the pioglitazone it showed that the increase in weight and also increase in heart failure while using the drugs versus the standard care standard care is lifestyle modification plus minus metformin okay so glycemic control alone is not enough okay initially the treatment of di uh, diabetes was just glycemic control then it came to a uh, patient centric that means that depending on the patient you have to make uh, his or her hbnc then came in 2018 this cardi thing and then came the gluco cardio renal centric that means those drug which are actually useful for the cardio renal benefit should be used not only the glycemic control and now the latest trend is for the pathophysiology you want to treat the root cause not just the glycemic control okay this everybody of you must have uh, heard and read about this the omnes octet of defronso so if you combine and see metformin with sglt2 almost 6 would be covered and if you cover include a glp1 also then almost 8 of eight pathways pathophysiology would be covered so obviously combination is much better as discussed by the previous speakers as well so which second drug following the metformin that's the main question and what the guideline says so i'll just cover briefly the three guidelines the first one is obviously ada that says that lifestyle modification followed by metformin followed by acvd risk factor whether the patient has already established risk factor or any is uh, acvd risk factor or established acvd you have to give a sglt2 inhibitor or a glp1 analog if the patient has heart failure you have to give an sglt2 clear cut heart failure sglt2 if the patient had ckd by ckd it's mean the dkd that's micro albuminuria that means you have to give a sglt2 inhibitors to minimize hypoglycemia again an sglt2 if you have to lose weight or you want those drug which has less weight gain then again an sglt2 cost is a major issue it's an ada we have here non patented sglt2 inhibitor so it's that almost the cost of an sulfonylurea so that's not our part here so you can see here all the part sglt2 is there so we can obviously prescribe after metformin but whether to give in all patient that i am coming coming to the nice guideline again the same thing because of lack of time i am just going fastly so here you can see if the patient has some heart disease heart failure cvd atherosclerotic you have to give a sglt2 inhibitor if the patient has high risk also you have to give an sglt2 now coming to the bmj this is a newer thing so here you can see uh, those patient who has three or fewer uh, risk factor you can give anything and the risk factor you will see here asian that all that everybody of your patient is included now male more than 60 family history uncontrolled hbnc so uncontrolled hbnc and asian is included and uncontrolled hypertension dyslipidemia so almost three factors every patient would be having an obesity also so if these risk factor are there or already cardiovascular disease including a cerebrovascular or a cardiac event or a chronic disease or both then what the guideline says this is from the bmj so we suggest sglt2 inhibitor that the patient having three or more risk factors and those patient who have already established cardiovascular and renal disease again we recommend sglt2 that is what the guideline says so what are the evidence for the sglt2 inhibitors there are plenty of evidence already the previous spoke speakers have told i'm not going to details all those empire canvas declared credence and you know that three point maze that was not differentiated in the dapa that was because the primary prevention the sample they took only the 40% of those patient had a already established this factor 60% were in the primary prevention group otherwise you will see 
all these had significant difference in the hospitalization to heart failure and the ckd progression okay now coming to the heart failure trials the recently we have their deliver trial also this is from the uh, previous thing so dapa hf emperor reduce emperor preserved solist all these shows that you can see here hospitalization to heart failure significantly difference was there uh, and dapa hf cv death was also different all cause mortality was also differentiated okay that was significantly different now coming to renal outcome which we don't have specifically for the glp1 analogs the credence and the dipa ckd here you can see that there was difference to the hospitalization to heart failure and the three point maze difference was there and primary renal outcome which was almost uh, whether the uh, this uh, creatinine increase or the patient going into esrd that was significantly different in both the trials so may you argue that okay the second drug may not be an sglt2 inhibitor it should be a glp1 receptor agonist at the previous uh, was a debate but are there evidence yes there are evidence for that also the same paper which the previous speaker has shown that i have also put so this is the gap is actually narrowing and both are almost i would say on the same going on the same track so this is from the uh, this paper you can see here that the previous uh, one also told that the maze difference was 12 and 14 percent that's non-significant difference between the glp1 receptor agonist and the glt2 inhibitor and also cv mortality non-significant different myocardial infarction whereas stroke is significantly different in the glp1 receptor agonist versus an sglt2 inhibitor as already told uh, 17 percent reduction in the glp1 reduction uh, receptor agonist and no effect not increased it is increased numerically but non-statistically that means sglt does not increase something that is also going into mind that it increases it does not increases okay non-statistic and glp1 total mortality it's almost same hospitalization to heart failure we know that it's the sglt2 if the patient has heart failure you have to give whether now it's used in non-diabetic so we are talking about diabetic obviously you will give when you're giving in non-diabetic right so last one the kidney outcome we know that there is no dedicated trial and also that is only for the microalbuminuria not for the creatinine doubling all those things so sglt2 is again a beneficial thing and now we are giving in those patients who have even egfr less than 30 that was the previous thing that you don't give it now we are giving it even the dapa included in the trial was uh, up to 25 and the ampa up to 20 the recent trials okay ampa kidney and dapa ckd so finally i will rest with not to forget the cost that is again very important that is why this actually prevent now we are getting these drugs at a very lower cost which have a better outcome so this should be given to those patients and now this is even used in non-diabetic patient so obviously your diabetic patient even with a controlled hvnc if fall into this group should be given an sglt2 inhibitor not just the uh, seeing the HBNC. Now I have left with one minute, just uh, a small discussion. So this is something I have started. Uh, can we have on the screen? Uh, this is something I have started, a hormone India chain. It's a, for me, a group practice and I'm the founder for this. And I've started as a group practice and given franchises to other 11 DMs.